Welcome to IdeaGen TV. Today we are ecstatic to have with us live from our studio here in Washington, Amy Hopkins, Executive Director for Strategy at Phantom Works at Boeing. Amy, so great to have you here. Great to be here. What a day. We're in Washington and we're talking about some really inspirational areas that you're working on at Boeing. I'd love to hear for our global audience a little bit about you, as well as your role and responsibilities at Boeing. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, as I said earlier, before we got started, I'm super excited to not be in my pajamas <laughs> and, and to right. put on a really nice pair of heels to come in today. So thank, thank you very you. much. Um, it's a pleasure. So as you mentioned, I'm the executive director for strategy for PhantomWorks. Um, PhantomWorks is the innovation arm for Boeing de Defense. And my role as the chief strategist is to uh, set the, the vision and that long-term strategy for, for PhantomWorks and how that's going to feed into the broader Boeing defense uh, as a whole. I, I started in defense industry about eight years ago or so. Uh, before that, I had a 15-year career as a civil servant uh, working for the government. I worked in both the executive and the legislative branches of government. Uh, most of my executive time was spent with the Department of Defense. Yeah. And uh, in those roles, I was deployed and was able to support military operations all over the world, everywhere from the former Yugoslavia to the Asia Pacific region and Incredible. everywhere in between. Uh, on the legislative side, uh, my legislative time kind of bookends my civil servant career. Uh, I started off working as a personal staff on the late Senator Roth's uh, staff. Uh, go Roth IRA, <laughs> and uh, ended my legislative time as a professional staffer on the Senate Select Committee for, for Intelligence. Um, loved, loved my time on the Hill, um, but if there's one thing I, I would like to say since I have the opportunity with a global audience, what you learn in high school or grade school about I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill is exactly not how a bill becomes a law. And I wish someone had explained that to me. It actually took working on the Hill to, uh, to truly appreciate the, yeah. the, the dynamics uh, that, go into, uh, that go into the legislative process. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about me, but that's, to me, what you can find on any LinkedIn bio. I find that part yeah. of me mildly interesting. Uh, so let me tell you a little something that you probably can't Google oh, about great. me. All right. Um, I am a single mother of two sometimes wonderful children. My daughter is 15 going on 25 and my son is 14 going on four some days. Uh, they both have taught me more about how to traverse the waters of the national defense apparatus than any training I've ever had. Um, one last thing you probably won't be able to Google about me is I'm a fifth generation dairy farmer. Oh, wow. That's incredible. My, my family and I, we own and operate what is now the largest dairy in the state of Delaware. And I know most people go, okay, Delaware, really? I go, yeah, it's the size of most people's counties, but we're excited about it. Um, my father runs the day-to-day -day dairy operations. My nephew runs our on-site uh, ice creamery. Oh, wow. And my sister runs our on-site uh, year-round wedding events in the historic barns. My role on the farm is that of the beekeeper. Oh, the beekeeper. Yes. So oh, great. Each, each generation has passed down to, to the next what, what your family role is. And uh, it worked out well for me. I don't like milking cows, and my dad didn't like being stung by bees. So okay. it worked out perfect. 
Uh, oh so those gosh. are two little fun facts. You know, you probably won't find on my LinkedIn bio or or uh, or on Google anywhere. So you know, that's really funny because we really did not find those on your bio. No, we, we didn't see those anywhere. So for the global audience, now you know more about Amy Hopkins from <laughs> Boeing than you knew before today yeah. before watching this program. So, Amy, uh, turning to the programming in terms of the focus of IdeaGen, and I know a commitment by mm -hmm. Boeing on so many levels, as we look toward achieving those 17 global goals mm -hmm. that were unanimously, this is important, I believe, unanimously agreed to by all 193 member states. You alluded to how perhaps it may be termed as difficult it is on Capitol Hill to pass a bill what the process really looks like, the work that it entails, et cetera, because you've seen it firsthand. And as we look at these 17 goal, global goals, um, but specifically goal, goal number nine in particular, what sort of work are you doing at Boeing to help with the achievement of innovation? How do you create that innovation, especially in areas like you're working on at, at Phantom Works, et cetera? So I love that you asked that, right? I am very passionate about uh, innovation. I, I always have been throughout my whole career. Working at Phantom Works um, truly is the, the, the dream place to be able to do that. Uh, you know, we talked about what makes up Amy Hopkins. You know, all, all of these different experiences that I have had in my life are part of the different perspectives that, that, I, that I bring to, to the role. And it's, um, it's something I like to call, it's that, it's that power of the different perspective that you bring. So as the chief strategist, my, my role at Phantom Works is really to, to set that environment so that the perspectives, those, those powerful perspectives of many different people can be brought to bear to solve some of the nation's hardest problems. So again, as that strategist, my, my role and what, what we're really doing at, at Phantom Works, what I'm specifically focused on, I, I like to think of in terms as of a vision flag. Mm -hmm. My job is to make sure that that, that vision flag is, is, is set, not too close, because if you set that flag too close, you, you run the risk of not really achieving your, right. your strategic goals. But if you set it way too far out, Nobody can nobody can really see it, and and they're not sure where they're headed. So it's it's that it's that balance of setting that that vision flag, firmly planting it, and then communicating out to the rest of the organization. Now you can focus on your goals. And again, right. the goal of Phantom Works is to be that innovative arm to bring all these different perspectives together that can fuel the fire and allow the innovation to happen. Incredible. So that, that, that's really what we're doing is setting the environment for the innovation to happen. Right. Because you can't direct, go innovate. Yeah, you know, okay. as, as where a, do you begin? Yeah, you, you know, where do you start? You can't, you can't direct it. Right. But as leaders, we have to set the environment so that it can naturally occur. That's, you know, a, a, for our global audience, I mean, that is a perspective that I think is so powerful that you just articulated because in the conversations that we're having daily and the thousands of interviews that we've done, I think we're starting to see an emerging pattern or thread that is really focused on all of the issues relating to what's happening across the planet, especially with the global pandemic. And as it's been described, if you can't see it, you can't even begin to reimagine it which is what you just described in a very articulate way. And I'm grateful for you be, to, for stating it that way, because I think there's an opportunity now to really think through this strategically. And when you say you're setting and planting that flag, I think it's setting the tone for people to understand that, again, if you can't see it. Where are you going? Where are you going? And how do you begin to reimagine it? Right. Like some folks are saying, we're going to rebuild. Well, is that the right answer or should we reimagine? Uh, we know where we've been. Mm -hmm. If we want to fix the issue, whatever it is, then we need to be able to see it. Yes. 
And for those communities across the country, especially with disparities now that have been shown a big bright light, we need to rebuild, but we also need to reimagine. And as these wins, I, I you know that's, a, that's why I think in terms of a vision flag. Yeah. As these winds are are blowing the environment. Sure. Some people, you know, as as leaders, yeah, we have to constantly communicate. Know that the strategic flag is still placed. I have my hands firmly at the bottom of it. You may see this flag, but you still waiting, see it. But you still see it, and I am going. I communicate to you. I promise to you that that strategic flag is still there. It's not moving. It might look like it's moving, but it's not moving. It's still set. Right. And I'm here to to reassure you that these winds and all the environment, that everything's going on. Our goal is still there. That it's is our, there. that is our mm -hmm. vision. Yeah. But I do promise that if the environment becomes so so much changes that we do mm -hmm. need to lift and change our strategic objective. My promise as a as the chief strategist, you know, especially for Fan Wars and Boeing Company, is to communicate that either before or at, as soon as possible that that flag is. I am lifting it, I am moving it, and I am replanting it. Oh wow! Communicate that out so that the whole the organization as a whole we can move together. And and everyone sees and that flag. Everybody sees it, and yeah. I have communicated that it has moved. We have but now it's placed again. Here are our new objectives. Mm -hmm. Now you can focus on your goals so that we can all get there together. I, in my mind, I always have this idea. I love the movie Braveheart. It's like they're all standing there at the top of the, you know, they have to take this objective. Right. And, you know, not that I have my face plated in half blue or anything, but, you know, you don't want your forces off going in different directions. That's right. You That's want right. everybody working together. So interesting because I think, it makes me think of a golf analogy, right? The flag. The flag. And you're moving toward that flag. And even if it's raining, even if it's foggy, and you can't quite see it perfectly in the distance, you still know where it is. Yeah. And on golf courses, they move the flag occasionally. Where's mm -hmm. the pin today? Is it over oh. there? It's a great analogy. You got to know where it is before you get started. You got to know where it is before you get started. <laughs> Unless it's a dog leg, right? Oh, then, and yeah, then you okay. have a problem. You can't see the flag at all. So, <laughs> yes. Um, so you use the phrase setting the environment. Um, could you share some examples? Absolutely. Um, so I, I like to come back to, again, one of the fun, fun facts you can't Google about me, um, about being a mom. Um, to, for, for me, I, uh, I was a little, I was struggling when I first became a mother. I was I was worried about, you know, was I going to have, you know, do right by not only my career, but but my but my children. And it began to dawn on me that as I was going through all these different stages of my my children's lives, it was I looked at it as, as train. It was they were training modules. You know, I have there's the newborn module. <laughs> There's the toddler module, and and all of these provided me with um, with that perspective, and and to be able to value it in others as I was going through it. The the newborn years to me directly translate to, you know, you're making life and death decisions on very little sleep. Yeah. But what a what a what great training you needed working in to support a military operations in the Department of Defense. <laughs> The toddler years for anyone who has chased after a toddler, that's managing chaos. There's managing there's chaos. that training module. The I'm only now into the teenage module. Uh, I'm sure it's going to provide me with a lot of wonderful training. But that power of of perspective, the being a being a mother, provided me with. A, a greater capacity to, to love and a greater capacity to lead. And those two things together, I thought were, you know, that's a great, that's a powerful perspective. So how do I now make sure that the environment I set for others who are going through this yeah. can bring in their unique yeah. um, perspectives? So 
when I, so that's a long way of me getting around to an example, is when I'm uh, pulling teams together, I, I look for every, you know, every different type of perspective, every different type. There's so much strength there in, in that diversity of your life experiences. That it that it brings to to the table. So I I love to put my teams through a, a strength finders exercise because I like to find teams of people who are exactly not me. <laughs> I'm I, or maybe like one other person like me. But the last thing you want is sure. ten people yeah. just like you on That's a team. Right. That's right. You're not going to get any. You're, yeah. you're not going to have any diversity mm -hmm. of thought. You're not going to have any diversity of approach. Um, and, and without that, yeah. you're not, innovation can't be fueled. That's right. It's like team of teams, which it is. Crystal. I mean, it's, um, I think it's important to have, uh, diverse teams and, 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 you know, you, you pull together strength across the board mm -hmm. from various personalities and capacities and training and education and, mm -hmm where you're from and everything else. So it yes. gives you deep perspective, doesn't it? Which is why you have to you have to dig harder and further than just your just someone's LinkedIn bio. Interesting. Well as we I, found out today, I mean who exactly, would have known? That's who right. would have known? And no one would have known. No one would have known. And that's something it, I, I always challenge other other leaders mm. in in other industries of it's not just the defense industry, any sure. industry. Any industry. When you're searching out folks and looking for the right teams to pull together we have to dig deeper than what's right. on the resume that's right that's such a incredible perspective so that's what you mean by going deeper in terms of setting the environment yes i get it and i think for our global audience what incredible perspective um how can someone take the step that first step to set that environment to allow for that innovation to happen. So first and foremost, I I I, I foot stomp this. I, I jump up and down about this. You have to recognize your own cognitive biases. We all have them. Every single human on this planet has biases. You're just. It's the marinade you grew up in. You're going to be biased. And when you say that's experiences? It's experiences. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's cognitive and, and it's unconscious sometimes. Right. Because you've watched a movie and you now have a perspective on right. how uh, someone who does cyber attacks operates. So yes. now you, that's your view of how it works. If you write a novel, it's fiction. And it's fiction, obviously. Novel. You write a novel. What is it based on? And it goes back to what you said originally, which I find fascinating which is that in order to reimagine you have to have seen it mm -hmm. so if you translate and flip it to experience then you're living with all this collective set of experiences yeah, your in your marinade head. it's yeah. your marinade right what, and what that, flavors you so it's really i mean it's really an interesting way to look at the experiences shape your perception it does and and we have to be cognizant of this we have to be conscious of it i i do it every single day when i meet someone new when i walk into a room to have a meeting it's it's so easy for us to to let our cognitive perspective or those biases take over we can't let that happen and it has to be something you you work on every single day you you have to change that and for me the way I've been able to change it is go, what is the power of their perspective? Interesting. Yeah. I want my perspective to be seen and, and heard because yeah. I think I have a powerful perspective. And if I do, every other person in that room, every other person in that meeting, you name it. So I, I try to tell myself when I when I can feel that that cognitive bias starting to, to take over. No, I has no. What is their? What's the power of their perspective? So interesting. Stop and listen, and you'll hear it. And and it also goes to you know we've heard a lot. We're hearing a lot on empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a word that is being used a lot today, and I think it's a powerful word. Mm -hmm. But I think what yeah. what we all need to think about with empathy is it's not sympathy. No. 
So I think on, in some ways it's sometimes confused as being sympathy, but what you just described is true empathy, is you're stepping into someone else's shoes and perspectives mm -hmm. to allow them to articulate what they see, feel, think, mm -hmm. have heard, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and out of that, I think comes some of the greatest solutions. And by the way, some incredible innovation. Yes. To be able to step back and listen. I hear it from leaders across the planet in interviews over and over and over again. So what are three key lessons you have that can change the world? Well, you need to listen. I think if I were to, when we haven't done this, we should rate how many times that's been said. It's incredible. People need to listen. Listen first. Mm -hmm. And gosh, we don't all do such a great job at just listening, do we? And isn't it so hard now in the age of <laughs> Zoom? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's harder not to listen. It's harder not to listen. But if we can, I, it really is just all about counting to five and stepping back for a moment and not making that blink, you know, with the book blink, you know, it's a blink instinct. Um, we need to step back maybe and, and just think about exactly the lessons you just articulated because they're so powerful, aren't they? They are. They're, they're so really powerful. Are. And so for you, Amy, where has your inspiration come from? Uh, you mentioned things that are not on your LinkedIn page. I find it fascinating. You know, you come from a family that runs a dairy farm. No one on LinkedIn knew that. They now know it, at least those that are watching this yeah. globally. Where does your inspiration come from, from across your various perspectives that you've had in the public sector, obviously, and now in the private sector? So I've had folks ask me this before. Um, couple of different ways. And for me, I, I am inspired. I'm inspired by great leaders. And I have had the opportunity, whether it is you know, growing up on a dairy farm, I, my, my grandfather was an amazing leader. He taught, he taught us the true value, what it really means to do long-term strategic planning. That's right. He taught me how to plan in terms of generations, not a five-year long-range business plan. I have, I've worked for other folks who I, I honestly, they, I would stand by them no matter what. They were so inspirational. They, they had all those traits, the, yeah. the empathy, the humility, the, wonderful communication skills where they listened more than they spoke. Uh, and at the same time, how do I say this? There, there's an executive coached way to say this. I have had the opportunity to work for some people who have fallen short on being uh, great leaders. Uh, Amy's way of saying that is I've worked for some really shitty people. I've had the opportunity to learn from both them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. You learn from both. You learn what what works and you learn about what doesn't and you decide, OK, I am going to take that trait forward. I'm not going to take that trait forward. That's right. Every opportunity is going to provide you with a learning experience. Of course. So, yeah. So on what not to do as on well. On what not to do. That's right. So, take each of your experiences throughout your life. And, and that's what I've done, each experience, and, and, and be able to bring it in and go, okay, lots of different inspiration along the way, lots of different flavors that, that I've kind of, that I keep note of and, and, sure. and keep in my hip pocket. Sure. So Yeah, and, and I think there's not one, you know, this question comes up a lot, and there's not one definition of a leader. If I told you who inspired you in life, you'd probably cite, you know, three, five, maybe ten people, all different. Yeah. No doubt. Um, and all inspiring for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And perhaps all with different personalities and from different places, et cetera. So there's not one model of leadership that I think is the right one. No. And in different um, times in your life, too. And at different times in your life. And so that I find fascinating because the whole topic of leadership is so important. And I must turn to the topic for today, which is empowering women and girls. Um, at Idea Gen, we've been talking about the empowerment of women and girls from before it was on the front page of the newspapers, et cetera. 
Um, I think it's the single most important topic that we could be talking about, quite frankly, because um, it just has to happen, yes. right? And from across the planet, you've served, you've gone overseas, you see the importance of it, not only in the United States where it's absolutely necessary, but in places across the planet that also, uh, it, that it's just so pivotally important. And so what words of encouragement, what words of inspiration, what words of guidance from your experiences can you give to women and girls looking to take non-traditional paths as well? So I'm very glad you asked. And I have come prepared. <laughs> Hold on. I can pull out. And we won't go through all this because we don't have time. <laughs> but I, I kid you not, I, I keep – and I, I keep rewriting it because it gets tattered. I, I keep it in my notebook with me all the time because I, I go to meetings and I always have a, a, a notebook with me, a notebook and pen all the time. And in it, I keep folded up Amy's top 10 list. Amy's top 10 list. Here now, we go. Now, the top 10 list, it actually started off as just a top 10 list. But if you if you look, I, I've started to put sub bullets into some of these. So it ends up being like top 20, but I still want to call it a top 10 list. I even I even highlighted Amy's top 10 list. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Because I, I want to be, I, I always want to be prepared when, when you know, I, I've had some uh, younger women who are just getting into the defense industry, and it is, it is a male dominated industry. And, and they ask me sometimes this, the, the exact same question, Amy, what, what, what could, what one thing could you tell me? I go, well, I actually have 10 things. I won't go through all 10, but um, I, I wanted to point out on a, a couple just to, just to bring out. Um, I, I tell people to decide early on if you're going to be, you know, it's going to date me. Are you going to be a Tigger or are you going to be an Eeyore? Trust me, doom and gloom does not get you very far. Now, I'm not saying you want to be a yes man, but Tigger is energetic. Tigger is curious. Tigger is excited. So decide very early on, are you an Eeyore or are you a Tigger? Wow. I loved Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> um, and um, balance. And I'm I'm not talking about work life balance. I'm that's a that's a whole nother discussion we can have. I'm talking about having something outside of of work. Yeah. The I always tell people that great leaders, you know, if you if you spend too much time at work, if if you're there all the time, it actually hinders your your leadership development. And being devoted to your job doesn't equal leadership. That's right. Have have something outside uh, of of work to help you maintain and and balance your perspective. That's right. And it 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 makes you I think more authentic. Um, another word that comes up a lot lately. Another authenticity. yes, authenticity. Um, and the I think the last thing I would say, you know, of my top 10 list, one of the things that I, I value most of all, and even though this is number 10, I don't think it's the least important, um, but I would pass on to, to any, especially the young women out there, is that um, no one I lead works for me. I work for them. Servant leader. And you, you must always... You have to share those victories with everyone, but only you can own the failure. That's right. That's right. And 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 some might say, well, that's true for anyone. And I, I think I just I, I always want to make sure that the young women coming up know that is is that you have to be that that servant leader. Incredible. Um, so yeah, I, if we had time, we would go through all all ten. Go go so, go through. Some go of through. them are super we need to fun. Hear, we need to hear all ten um, because we've heard wanna, three. You want to? Okay, okay. Oh, you have to be prepared to zigzag. Zigzag. You got to be prepared to zigzag. Okay. I be flexible. Be flexible. There, no one, especially me, could have predicted the path my career took. You have to be prepared to zigzag. Um, persistence always pays off. Hmm. Persistence we've heard always that. pays off. We've heard that. Um, I would say uh, communication. We talked about this before too. 
Listening skills are the most important part of effective communication. Yep. Um, I, I have a little star here on this one. Uh, remind yourself or always re keep reminding yourself. Uh, are you the kind, and this is a great line, I think, in Pulp Fiction. Uh, are you the kind of person that listens or are you the kind of person who's waiting to talk? Powerful. Um, it's not what you do, but how you do it sometimes. Details. Um, so <sighs> what sometimes makes you, and I, I tell my kids this sometimes all the time, it's not, it wasn't what they said, but it was how they said it. It's the tone in which the you tone. say it. So it's not always what you do, but how you do it at the end of the day um, That's right. is, is almost more important. So getting true. getting the job done, but doing it in a way that hurts others, unacceptable. Unacceptable. Absolutely that goes unacceptable. To ethics. Yes, and rule that's of law. there. You go. Number seven. <laughs> you must always have the highest commitment to ethics. Yeah. Always, without without fail. Um, the last two. You have to be competent in your job. Being a quick study is one thing, but it only goes so far. I go so far. Learn your stuff. And to me, as a woman in the defense industry, you know, I I don't know if it was um, if it was just my again my perspective, but I I wanted to earn the respect of my of my peers. Sure. And to do that, you had to you had to know your stuff. I had to I had to prove that I belonged in that room. I belonged right. in that conference room even though I was the only woman in there. It's incredible. And you had to know your stuff. Uh, and last me, um, trust has to be earned. And you earn that trust by empowering your people. Amy's top 10 list. My Amy's gosh. top 10. That alone was um, inspiring. Keep it, keep it in my pocket. The rest of the conversation, <laughs> we turn to um, the global situation that we have. Yes. Whether you refer to it as COVID-19 or you call it the global pandemic or you call it the hidden enemy, it's all of the above, right? And so how do you feel, Amy, how do you feel that this global situation has impacted our progress toward achieving these 17 global goals by 2030? So I don't. I don't think we've begun to truly understand how it's going to impact us mm -hmm. either negatively or positively yet. I think it's still, even though we're all exhausted by it right now, I think it's too soon to tell. I think, you know, sitting here in Washington and, and thinking about diplomacy and thinking about, you know, the lobbying world, which is so important. I know it's, you know, been, you know, in some ways looked at negatively, but I think it has an important role for the important issues like cancer research. Mm -hmm. Those lobbyists that go up every day to lobby for more funding for cancer research, that's lobbying. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so much more difficult, I think. I think in a hybrid situation, fair. I know you, I can you know get jump on a, a Teams call or mm -hmm. Zoom or whatever, but if I don't know you, and I've never met you. I think it's a little bit more difficult to create that. It's so impersonal. It's in, it's a little bit more impersonal, and so I think, at least my prediction is, perhaps in a post-pandemic world, that we'll go back to meeting in person, but we'll take advantage of this incredible technology that we've now accepted. It, I think it is great, and that is the one one of the wonderful things that I have seen is, you know, especially as as a working mother, and I, I know that there's a lot of us out there, working parents, you know, period, working mom, dad, single parent, um, for for so long, for the last you know decade or more, we've been struggling with right. this idea of working from home. That's right. Well, if there is there, if there is one really awesome positive thing that this has shown us, we can all do it. That's right. We can do it and we can thrive. Yeah. And so let me ask you a follow up to that. I'm just curious from your vantage point. Do you believe 
we've seen the you know we've seen the trajectory of everyone almost immediately going into across the planet going into working from home do you believe and this is just a question you may or may not know the answer that productivity how does it affect productivity i know at the beginning we saw a tremendous productivity does it level off does it slide down does it do you have to does it change the way you manage, for example? I I would love to see some some analytics on that. I mean, yeah. I, I'm a I'm a analyst by by trade. I want to see the data. I want to crunch mm -hmm. it because I know what I I know what I think. I know what I feel. I I think it's going to level off, um, but I, I I don't know how it has changed me. I've had to adjust. I I used to fly to see my teams all over the country all the time. Right. Um, now I, I do that via my computer screen. I miss not having a lot of that personal yeah. interaction. Right. Um, but we have worked to do and, and ensure that our productivity has, has, as you said, stayed the same, if right. not improved in certain areas. Wow. Um, some of our software developers, we were able to um, really create a mechanism for them to be as effective, if not more, at home, especially Amazing. for those with children. School, you know, yeah. we've all had to learn, you know, those of us with kids, <laughs> how to school from home. And and now, now look at us. I, it is actually amazing what we've been able to accomplish. It really is. It, it's amazing. And I think... You know, I think the world will be forever changed and it'll be just fascinating to watch, you know, looking back at some point, hopefully soon, mm -hmm. um, what it is that's changed forever mm -hmm. and how it is that it will improve communications and listening <laughs> and doing. Mm -hmm. So these, these remain to be seen. So, Amy, if I were to ask you as a closing question, what is your post summit ask for our global, global audience? I have two answers to that. I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity. Um, my my first would be to, uh, especially to the young women out there who are who are maybe just getting started in in any industry. Don't don't waste your time trying to find someone who looks like you. Who talks like you, or or who who, who you try, want to try and, and emulate? For too many years, I I looked for that woman, and I never found her. And I very quickly had to realize I had to become the woman I was looking for. Don't waste your time trying to find her be her if not for you but for all the other women who are coming up behind you especially in an industry that is dominated by men so that's number one number two along that same vein i would encourage everyone especially women young women don't ever fall into the trap of thinking that because you're a woman, because you're a mother, because you're a single parent, don't ever fall into the trap of thinking that your perspective doesn't matter. The disadvantage that you think you have or the disadvantage you, you might think someone else has could absolutely be the one strength that that team needs to survive and to thrive and to innovate. Don't fall in the trap. What a powerful closing. Amy Hopkins, Executive Director for Strategy at one of the coolest named organizations within a company that I have ever heard, Phantom Works, at Boeing. Thank you so very much. Thank Amazing. you very much. It was my pleasure. You are changing the world. Thank you.